Hello and welcome to Perth, Western Australia. Today I'm going to catch the Prospector train from Perth all the way to Kalgoorlie. With COVID cases keep popping up on the east coast of Australia, it took me a lot of effort to finally get into WA to film this review. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video. Let's go! Perth is the fourth most populous city in Australia with a population of 2.1 million in 2020. Other than being really isolated from the rest of the country, I think Perth is an incredible city to live in. It boasts flip-flop weather nine months of the year, has gorgeous beaches, award-winning wine regions and an excellent public transport system. The city has a free transit zone on buses and trains in the CBD. Furthermore, a large expansion to Perth's rail network is currently undergoing. As a transportation nerd, any news on railway development is exciting. This is Perth railway station in the city. The station was opened in 1881. It was the centre of the Western Australian government railways network with most regional trains originating from the station. However, in the 1970s, most regional railway services in WA were seized. This includes passenger trains to Albany, Geraldton and Malawa. Today, there are only two regional services that are still running in the state, the Prospector to Kalgoorlie and the Australind to Bunbury. Perth station is now served as an interchange among Trans-Perth suburban railway lines as well as the Australind service. The station has nine platforms, three sides and two islands above ground and one island below ground. The Prospector departs from East Perth Terminal. Why didn't it depart from here? I didn't know at this point. If you tell the station staff that you are catching the Prospector, you don't have to pay for a ticket from Perth to East Perth. To get to East Perth, you can take the Midland Line service on Platform 8. The train comes every 10 to 30 minutes depending on the time of the day, and the trip takes 4 minutes. East Perth station has one island platform with two narrow gate tracks. It connects with the adjacent East Perth terminal through a pedestrian bridge. This is my first time seeing the Prospector train in real life. I'm so excited. Seeing the tracks from the bridge, I immediately understand why the Prospector doesn't depart from Perth station anymore. In the 19th century, Western Australia adopted narrow gauge on its mainline railways. As part of the federal government's program to build a standard gauge line across Australia in the 1960s, the line from Kalgoorlie to East Perth has been converted to either standard gauge or dual gauge. All tracks at Perth station are still narrow gauge, therefore this standard gauge train could only depart from East Perth. East Perth Terminal is also the terminus for the Indian Pacific luxury passenger train which travels between Perth and Sydney. With the standard gauge line from Perth to Kalgoorlie due to open in mid-1969, the Western Australian Government Railways decided to replace the Kalgoorlie overnight sleeper service with a daylight service. The new service commenced on the 29th of November 1971, cutting the 653km journey time from 14 to 8 hours. Today's Prospector is operated by TransWA. The current rolling stocks are TransWA WDA class. They entered service in 2004. The new rail cars are capable of reaching 200km per hour, but track conditions have restricted their top speed to 160-270km per hour. Nonetheless, they have further reduced journey time to 6 hours and 50 minutes. All passengers are able to bring one item of carry-on luggage and one item of checked luggage on the service. Carry-on luggage may weigh up to 7 kilos and checked luggage may weigh up to 20 kilos. Any extra luggage can be purchased for $15 per item. As such, in order to check in your luggage, you have to arrive at the station at least 15 minutes before departure. Boarding commenced 20 minutes prior to departure. The staff will check your ticket before you board the train. There's only one travel class available on the Prospector. Depending on the demand, the train travels in either two rail cars or in three rail cars. This service has three rail cars. Welcome aboard! Each carriage has a water fountain and a toilet. 
The seats are in a 2-2 configuration. In this carriage, there are a total of 60 seats. All seats may look exactly the same to you, but since I'm now an insider, I think it is important to show you the differences. There are four types of seats. The first type are the seats that are directly behind a wall. It's good to see that the touchscreens are installed on the wall so you don't have to retrieve it from the armrest. But these seats have terrible legroom. If you sit in the aisle seat, you can stretch your legs into the aisle. But if you have a window seat, I believe that you will have a very uncomfortable journey. These are definitely the seats to avoid. There were people being booked into these seats, but the staff was very nice and found them alternative seats. The windows on this train are rectangular shaped. The gap between each window is pretty big. As a result, same as the New South Wales Explorer train, 50% of the window seats have the majority of a window and the other 50% only has a small portion of the window. If you got a seat with only a small portion of the window, your view is very limited compared to the window seat in front of or behind you. The last type are the seats in the last row. Because there's no one behind you, you can recline your seat freely. The last row also has large windows. One reminder is that these seats are reversible, so the last row from Perth to Kalgoorlie would be the first row from Kalgoorlie to Perth. The best way is to check the seat map before you travel. The map can be found on TransWA's website. <coughs> Same as the electric tilt train, each row has its own overhead compartment and each can be closed individually. There are luggage racks at both ends of the carriage, but I think they are only used by staff to store your checked luggage. This is car 3, there are 60 seats in this carriage as well. There are two types of toilets on this train. The one in car 2 and car 3 are regular sized toilets. To lock the door, you have to press the green button. Wait until the door is fully closed, then press the red button to lock the door. I'm impressed that even the regular sized toilet is very spacious. It's equipped with a hand dryer and a baby change table. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, the train will be departing shortly. So we ask that anyone who is not travelling with us today departs the train now as the doors are about to close. I'm now in car 1, the carriage that has a buffet. This is an accessible toilet, it has all the facilities that other toilets do and the space is even bigger. The buffet sells different cold, hot snacks, meals and beverages. It will open after we leave Midland Station. Car 1 has two accessible spaces for passengers in need. Let's have a more detailed look at the seat. It has good legroom and I can easily fully stretch my legs. The seat offers a little bit of recline. Each seat also has a headrest. Overall, this high back seat should be comfortable enough for this 7 hour journey. We left East Perth at exactly 10 past 7. It will stop at Midland Station to pick up more passengers. The platform at East Perth Terminal is really long, as the Indian Pacific usually has more than 30 carriages which can be over 700 meters long. The steam locomotive outside the station is a Western Australian Government Railways S-Class 482 steam locomotive built by the Midland Railway Workshops between 1933 and 1947. The class were initially intended for service between Perth and Kalgoorlie, though following World War II it worked primarily on the South Western Railway Line. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome on board the Prospector. 
My name is Kim, and together with Joe and Sally, we're delighted to be your host to Tamaridon, where there'll be a changeover staff. The prospect has a buffet service, which offers a selection of food and drink, including some alcoholic beverages. We're scheduled to arrive at Kalgoorlie at approximately 2 p.m., and we'll stop to pick up passengers along the way. If you have any queries today, please feel welcome to ask one of the crew. On behalf of the crew and trains WA, I wish you an enjoyable journey. Thank you for choosing our service. Midland is the terminus for Transperth Midland Line. The journey to Midland only takes 15 minutes. The current Midland station was opened on the 8th of October 1968 as a replacement for Midland Junction Station when the Eastern Railway Line was converted to dual gauge. The station had a standard gauge platform and two narrow gauge platforms. Interestingly, this Midland station will again be demolished and be replaced with a new station in order to accommodate the extension of Transperth Midland Line to Bellevue. Shortly after Midland, we left the city behind and is quickly approaching Darling Range. We have entered the Perth Hills wine region. The closest cellar doors in this region lie just a 25 minute drive from Perth City. Many vineyards at this region are owned and operated by local families and progressive winemakers who are passionate about their uniquely crafted wines. Their specialities are Shiraz, Viognier, Tempranillo, Mauvedra, Zinfandel and Dorof. The line that we are travelling on is Western Australia's Eastern Railway Line which connects Fremantle with Northern. The original line opened in stages between 1881 and 1886. Since its opening, the line has had two deviations. The most recent one was in 1966 between Midland and Northern, known as the Third Route or Avon Valley Deviation. Two parallel dual gauge tracks were built along Avon River, which enabled the abandonment of the steeply graded and sharply curved narrow gauge alignment from Bellevue over the Darling Range to Spencer's Brook. The third route has significantly more favourable grades and flatter curvature. This is one of the greenest parts of our journey to Kalgoorlie. Ladies and gentlemen, the buffet is now open and is situated in the leading car. Apart from during school holidays or the long weekend, the train rarely gets filled up, which is good news from a passenger's perspective. Almost everyone has an empty seat to themselves. At the back of the seat, there's a footrest. Each window seat has at least one power point, and we can see I'm already taking advantage of it. In the seat pocket, there's a safety card with carriage layout which shows where the emergency exit rows, fire extinguishers and first aid kits are. Above the seat, there are reading lights and air vents. Earphones for the entertainment were provided by the staff after we left Midland. They are now yours and you may take them off the train if you like. The seat back touch screen is about the same size as the screens on Qantas Boeing 737 economy class. The system stores around 20 movies along with some TV shows, a variety of music and three radio channels. I'm not sure how often TransWA updates the entertainment collections, but as a first time traveller there are a couple of movies that I like to watch. The train at the moment is not equipped with Wi-Fi. However, the Western Australian government announced in December 2020 that it is committed to a 12-month trial of Wi-Fi on the Prospector, so hopefully the Wi-Fi should be available in the very near future. What I like the most about this seatback screen is the moving map feature. Theoretically, it should be able to show you the train's live location, speed and altitude. Passengers should also be able to have access to the driver cam from the touch screen. Unfortunately, the screen never stops loading. The buffet has just opened. Let's go and have a sus. It is located in car 1. Here is a screenshot of the menu taken from TransWA's website. You can see that they offer a variety of snacks and drinks at very affordable prices. 
I'm really interested in the soup of the day. I can't believe it is cheaper than a cup of tea. I will try it at lunchtime. For breakfast, I noticed that many passengers purchased a sandwich or a ham and cheese croissant, but I'm a big fan of meat pies, so I purchased a beef pie for four dollars and a cup of tea for three dollars forty. After returning from a five-minute visit to the buffet, my screen is still trying to load the driver cam. I don't think it is gonna work then. Furthermore, the movie map on both of my screens are still at 7:45. It's now 8:14. How disappointing! I asked for a cup of white tea with one sugar. The staff has already took out the tea bag, added milk and sugar for me, which is very nice of them. The beef pie on board is sourced from Mrs. Max Pies. It is a family-owned company that manufactures its products locally in WA. Its famous minced beef pie is very tasty. It is filled with rich and meaty gravy wrapped up in golden crispy crust. As the buffet was only just open, the pie must have been freshly out of the oven. This is the best time to purchase a pie, and I reckon this is the most delicious pie I've ever had on a train. Two J is one of the oldest inland towns in Western Australia, and much of its heritage is preserved. It is set in the heart of the picturesque Avon Valley in Western Wheatbelt region, and is an extremely popular tourist destination. The town was originally called Newcastle. However, in order to avoid confusion with the Newcastle in New South Wales, the town was renamed to Two J in 1910. The meaning of the name Two J is uncertain. It is believed to be derived from an Aboriginal word Duiji, which means place of plenty, referring to the richness and fertility of the area and the reliability of the Avon River. This meaning appears to be a long-standing belief in the local community. Final check. The moving map is still stuck at 7:45, and the driver cam still isn't loading. What a shame! I would really love to see the live speed that the train is traveling at. Northam is only 20 minutes east of Two J. The town is WA's largest non-mining inland town and is home to over 185 heritage-listed buildings. Lying at the heart of Avon Valley, the grassy, tree-lined riverbanks have an abundance of birdlife, including Northam's famous white swans. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at Northam platform. Please stand by for Northern had two railway stations. The new one was opened in 1966 as the terminus of the dual gauge Eastern Railway line. From here, the line continues east to Kalgoorlie as the standard gauge Eastern Goldfields Railway line. The narrow gauge line branches off east of the town and connects York and Albany via the Great Southern Railway. The bright yellow flowers that we see on the side of the track is called oilseed rape or canola. It can be seen across the Wheatbelt region of Western Australia between August and September. From 2J to Southern Cross, they are everywhere. I have to say that these flowers have made the scenery so much more colourful. The Eastern Goldfields Railway line from Northam to Kalgoorlie was opened in stages between 1894 and 1897. In 1968, the line was converted to standard gauge with a new alignment to reduce the number of road crossings, being generally straighter and more favourably graded. The Goldfields Water Supply Scheme pipeline was constructed not too long after the railway line was opened. The pipeline delivers potable water from Perth to communities in eastern Goldfields, particularly Coolgardie and Kalgoorlie. 
The project was commissioned in 1896 and completed in 1903. The pipeline continues to operate today, supplying water to over 100,000 people in over 33,000 households, as well as mines, farms, and other enterprises. After Calabarin, the buffet will be closed for 30 minutes. It will reopen when the new crew board the train at Meriden. In case you wonder how I filmed views from both sides of the trains, this is how I did it. Ladies and gentlemen, the train will shortly be arriving at Meriden station. For those passengers who wish to stretch their legs for a moment, you may do so. Do not wander away from the platform to go to the shops or across the car park. The prospector does leave without warning and you will be left behind. On behalf of the crew and train to WI, thank you for choosing our service and we look forward to seeing you again. Meriden is another major town along the route to Kalgoorlie. Located in the central wheat belt region, approximately 40% of Western Australia's wheat production comes from a 100km radius around Meriden. Meriden station is roughly the midpoint between Perth and Kalgoorlie. My Kalgoorlie-bound prospector train will meet with the Perth-bound train at this station. The current Meriden station was also built after the line was converted to standard gauge. However, the original station is still standing. Opened in 1895, it is diagonally opposite to the new station. It is now a railway museum. Exhibits include a G-class steam locomotive and a TA-class diesel locomotive. So this is what a two-car prospector train looks like. The crew change allows the Perth-based crew to travel back to Perth and the Kalgoorlie-based crew to travel back to Kalgoorlie. To record, you have to press this button. Yeah. There. Yeah, and then now it's recording. You see. I can see the moon. Yeah, you can see the moon with this camera. True. Yeah. After Meriden, the land has become significantly drier. However, you still can see the oilseed rape and large areas of grass from time to time. The buffet has now reopened and we remind you that this is a licensed premise. I began to feel hungry, so I headed to the buffet when it reopened and I'm looking forward to trying the hot meal on the Prospector. Today, there are two hot meal choices, a vegetarian lasagna for $8 or a teriyaki chicken with rice for $10. The staff were indeed very warm and friendly. One of them even showed me a sample of the chicken and offered me advice on what to have. Uh, taka, taka. Oh, okay. 
chicken. Teriyaki chicken or, or vegetable lasagna as well? Yeah, uh, can I have the teriyaki chicken please? Yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, I think there's there's a lot of vegetables and rice, but I don't know how much chicken. <laughs> that's all right. I yeah? Just, yeah, I can just try it. It's all you try one of them? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So in the end, I decided to listen to her hidden advice and got the lasagna instead. I might just get a little uh, veggies for lasagna. Yeah, sure. Yeah. sure. Does it take long for the meal to be heated up? Uh, the meal... Uh, it's about six minutes for the veggie lasagna. Yeah. We'll bring that down to you, alright? Alright, all good. We're about to be sitting. Uh, Unlike on the New South Wales XPT, the Explorer and the Electric Tilt Train that take 50 minutes for the frozen meal to be heated up, it only takes 6 minutes for my lasagna to be ready on the prospector, and the staff will bring it to my seat. Along with the lasagna, I also bought the soup of the day with a bread roll and butter for $3.45. At first, the lasagna didn't really look very appetizing to me. It is also a frozen meal, therefore I thought I must have wasted my $8. However, as I started digging in, I realized that it actually tasted really good. I can see there are diced tomatoes and mushrooms in there. It was delicious. The flavor wasn't too salty nor too sour, and the ratio between the pasta and the veggies were perfect. I wouldn't mind having it again next time. I now really appreciate the advice from the staff. In terms of the soup, there were three options. I couldn't remember what they were. The soup was made of a pack of powder full of MSG. If it wasn't for this review, I would have purchased a drink instead. The lasagna though, I would highly recommend. It's interesting to see that a second ago the scenery was filled with desert plants, yet the next second it's the beautiful bright yellow flowers again. Ladies and gentlemen, next stop is Southern Cross Station. For those passengers alighting, can you please make sure you have all your luggage and personal belongings? And please make your way to the centre car doors. Thank you. This Southern Cross station certainly is a lot quieter than the one in Melbourne. The station serves the town of Southern Cross. It is the last town on the eastern edge of the Wheat Belt and the first town on the eastern Goldfields region. When the new Stanford gauge line was built, it bypassed the town. This is why there aren't any houses around the station. The town's historic importance lies in the fact that in 1887, it became the first major gold discovery in the eastern goldfields. Therefore, for a time, the town was regarded as the mother town of Coolgardie and the grandmother of Kalgoorlie. As we have finally travelled through the wheat belt region, the grass, the oilseed rape and the sheep have disappeared at last. We are now travelling through the most remote section of our journey. For the next an hour and a half, all I could see was the typical view of the outback. Nothing but the desert plants and the red soil. After spending 5 hours non-stop filming on the train, I decided to sit back, relax and watch a movie. There's no one sitting behind me anymore, so I reclined my seat and plugged in the earphones. When the seat is fully reclined, the distance from my ears to the earphone jack is about the same as the length of the wires. As a result, if I move my head, I could easily unplug the earphones. This is just a very minor issue. Maybe TransWA could get earphones with longer wires. I decided to watch Around the World in 80 days. It was such a classic comedy movie. I totally enjoyed it. So, 653 kilometers in 6 hours and 50 minutes, at an average speed of 95 kilometers per hour, no other passenger train in Australia can cover such distance in this amount of time. In comparison, the electric tail train, which holds an Australian speed record of 210 kilometers per hour, only travels at an average speed of 82 kilometers per hour between Brisbane and Rockhampton.
Sitting on a train for 7 hours may sound a bit long, but it's actually not bad. This is one of the most scenic train rides I've ever experienced in Australia, from the city to Avon River to oilseed rape fields and finally to the outback. The ever-changing scenery has kept me excited for the entire journey. The buffet on board offers lots of options at very cheap prices. The beef pie and the vegetable lasagna are my absolute favourite. The seat is comfortable enough for this trip, the PowerPoint is definitely useful. I like the idea of showing a moving map and driver cam view in the touchscreen, very unfortunately though, they both weren't working today. Lastly, the mobile reception on this route is weak. My service provider is Optus, I only get signal when the train approaches a station. However, the launching of the free Wi-Fi in the next couple of months should make communications with the outside world a lot easier. Ladies and gentlemen, the train will shortly be arriving at Kirkgoolie Station, where this service will terminate. Please remain seated until the train has come to a complete stop. On behalf of the Kalgoorlie crew and Trans WA, I thank you for choosing our service and look forward to seeing you again. Thank you. After arrival, the luggage can be collected on the platform. Welcome to Kalgoorlie. It is a hub of the Western Australian goldfields and is the largest city in Australian outback. The Super Pit Gold Mine is Australia's second largest open cut gold mine and is approximately 3.5 km long, 1.5 km wide, and over 600 meters deep. If you ever find yourself in Kalgoorlie, I would suggest you to join the Super Pit Gold Mine tour and you will learn a great deal about gold mining. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you find it interesting, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more train and flight reviews. I'll see you all in my next video.